Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review of This Is Us Season 6, Episode 18, the series finale. We have made it. We are at the end of the long Pearson family journey. This was really emotional for me, and, and not for the reasons that I thought it was going to be. I thought that the episode was going to have me a lot more in tears, like I'd been watching three hours of those dog videos where they're reunited with their army parents. You guys know what I am talking about. But it's really about my journey with this show and this show ending. I'm just like... I feel like I'm I I haven't accepted it yet. I feel yeah. like ah next week we're going to be talking about this show again and it's just it's been such a beautiful journey with this show of uh, the show almost feels like a friend, like someone who just relates to me and I relate to them and like all these moments I'm like yeah, I've gone through that or you know, it's just it it was really difficult to get through this finale, and that's why for me, just it, it's ending. And I, I think a big part of it, you know, for me is just this practice of coming on here and, you know, doing these videos, but of course also like talking with all of you guys about it after the fact. Like, you know, this This Is Us community has been really special and near and dear to both of us. And, you know, yeah. of course... We want to keep the community going with you guys. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you know, please do so. I mean, we have a lot of other shows, including Obi-Wan Kenobi coming up this Friday that we are talking about. You know, give some of these shows a chance if you haven't seen them and just be a part of our community with that, too. We treasure this so much that even though this is the end of This Is Us, it's not the end of anything that we have been building and discussing with you guys. Yeah, we have a lot of other shows that we do cover here. And one of the things you can do is go to our main page and there's a button that says playlists and it will list all of the shows that we do cover here. But you guys have been giving us some suggestions of things that you also want to see covered here. So we're going to be looking at that over the summer to keep some of those discussions going but there might be something else that you guys already watch with us or give something else a chance because the community that we've built here with this is us we have that with other shows where they're you know fun theories good discussions like it it has spread across the youtube on our channel and we're really thankful for it because we don't have a lot of people in our real lives that watch the same shows as us so yeah. we don't get to just call up you know whoever and talk about the shows we come here and chat with you guys about the shows and that's why this is also very hard to be at the end of the road with this show because it's meant a lot to us to have these discussions with you and we really do hope that you'll subscribe to the channel and you know check out some of our other stuff and we would really appreciate it if you followed us over on our instagram matt and jess tv we have some new pictures up harley our yep. rescue cat sat on the couch which is very rare for her actually sat with matt on the couch yeah. very rare for her i don't know we don't know a lot about her other family that abandoned her they just left her under a bush and moved away um but she was really afraid of furniture when we first yeah. got her like five years ago and it's only been recently that she's starting to actually get on the furniture <laughs> so yeah follow us on instagram just to keep up with what we're doing in case this is us did not make us emotional enough sitting with the cat on the couch just like that is like the cherry on top of the emotional cake okay <laughs> all right Let's get let, let's get into this and I'm already just going to go ahead and get controversial here that we're a few minutes in <laughs> oh, because wow, okay. all right here's here's the thing I was wondering if you're going to bury this at the end of the video I'm here for it if you come come for me if you are ready to come for me no Whoop. this is the thing I don't think it's possible to hate this finale and it, you, maybe you guys in the comments will prove me wrong but it's just like for my vantage point they set this up in a way where it was very easy to be satisfied by it, by a lot of the stories and the emotional content that they gave. But I think in doing that, they also played it very, very safe. This is a very safe 
finale that is designed to make you feel a certain way, mm -hmm. but also not designed to, I think, blow your mind, surprise you, astound you. I just, I think back to the start of This Is Us, and I think a lot of what got people so hooked and addicted to the show in the first place were, you know, these big reveals, the the surprises, the, you know, the moments that sort of made your jaw drop and made you think about things a little bit differently. And, you know, this is a good emotional finale, and I think it did a lot right, but it also was very unambitious, and I think it did outside of, I guess, them planning it and filming parts of it for years on end. Like, other than that sort of aspect of it, I don't think it really did a lot to sort of get people talking about it in the days and weeks to come. The thing that I I found kind of interesting, I was talking to my stepmom the other day about This Is Us because she is one of the people in my life that watches it with me. And she was surprised to actually learn that there was another episode <laughs> after the train. She was kind of like, that was such a beautiful episode and it was and she's like i legitimately thought that was the end and i was really satisfied with that 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 moment that we saw her lay down in the bed with jack she's like i thought that was the end and i was like yeah that was really good and she's like i don't know what they're gonna do in this finale now like how can they you know make it better than that as the end and you guys know that my theory was kind of that we were going to see, you know, a little bit of the funeral because that is kind of the last, you know, we're all together. They're very spread out across the country. But I thought that we were going to really see the effect that all three of their parents, I include Miguel in this, had on the big three and to see them go off and live their best lives. And we got not really any of that we had a very short conversation with them um sitting on the porch and it played out uh, like i said in the preview we've got kevin who's going to continue on with the big three homes and continue jack's legacy kate is going to continue to open up more music schools continue on rebecca's legacy and randall is finally going to be doing something for himself and create his own legacy and i'm very satisfied with that I'm really happy with that, too. I, I think these are the things we wanted for these characters. I mean, yeah, I kind of thought that maybe we would see more of Kevin, the actor, and everything else. But I'm, I'm happy with the direction that they took with all of that. And I think it, it's good to at least have an idea <laughs> of where the big three are going to be going. But, yeah, kind of like what you said. I, I wish that they had taken even just a few minutes somewhere within this episode. It even gave us, like, a little bit of a glimpse of some of this. I've made it no secret in these past few episodes how much I wanted to see Randall basically doing what they said he would be doing in this episode. You know, going down to, like, the state fairs in Iowa, you know, shaking hands, taking part in all of some of these kind of wacky campaign traditions. And I just think... Actually seeing that happen would be so much more interesting to me than some of the stuff that we got in the finale that just felt like it was sort of circling the wagons on everything we know this is us to be already, which is great. It's a great show, but, you know, you talk about the train and how important and how wonderful that episode was. Mm -hmm. One of the big reasons why is because it took that big chance with the train itself. Like, that could have failed miserably, but it didn't. I, I wanted them to take a chance of equal measure in this finale and so that we could come on and really dive into that after the fact. I do like that they, you know, went back to this Saturday where they all got to spend some time together sort of doing these things where, you know, Kevin's learning to shave, Randall's learning to shave, you know, and they're they're all having these moments watching videos, one of their favorite days that they ever had. And it's nice to have that memory. And I just wish that there had been a couple other memories like we saw William in a memory as well with, you know, Memphis and all of that. But again, there was no Miguel. And it's very strange to me with that, considering how long he was married to Rebecca and what a huge influence he had in her life, in the kids' lives. Like, he was really a part of this family. And I know that it really is about Jack and Rebecca and the big three, but there are other people that really influence this life, like William. Yeah. Like Miguel, like there are these other people. And I was kind of surprised that there was 
there was nothing. It's interesting, right? <laughs> because I think so much of this finale was about preserving precious memories. And yeah, like the stuff with, you know, Randall and Kevin learning to shave. Like, I remember when I learned to shave. I think a lot of a lot of people probably do. And I think that's going to be really relatable and great for a lot of people. But it is also, they were kind of picking and choosing which precious memories they wanted to show. And I think it kind of goes again in the we're playing it really safe territory because Miguel, I think Miguel's a lot more popular now than he was in the early days, but he was pretty polarizing once upon a time and they sort of plucked him out of this story. Philip was not even really in this finale at all. <laughs> no, that was really strange. We had this moment with Toby and Cade, where he was like, I'm really proud of you. You know, basically, I still love you. If I could go back in time, I even though we ended up divorced, I would still do it all again. It's all great for, you know, all of us who really love that relationship. But at yeah. the same time, it's kind of like they had moved forward from this relationship and they could have that moment, but still have Philip there. Like, <laughs> where was her actual husband? Also, it's kind of weird to me that they showed Toby, you know, meeting this woman and presumably, you know, we know they have a future together, but it's like this woman is just not even referenced or even mentioned in any other scenes involving Toby in the final episodes. No, and that's why I kind of wonder if this scene was sort of put there as a way to be like, yes, he has moved on. Yes, you know, he's happy in his other relationship, but his biggest regret is losing Kate, that Kate was the love of his life. And while he's able to move on and love yeah. again, he's always got this attachment of this, what if, you know, man, I really, you know, missed the boat on that. I am really glad that Toby <laughs> was there and he got to be a part of a lot of this. And I... I like a lot of the characters who did get a little bit of time. Like the moment with Nikki and Kevin, this mm -hmm. is the weekly let's talk about how great Nikki is conversation where he's basically like, you made me have feelings, Kevin. How dare you? It's like <laughs> the most inappropriate thing you can say at a funeral and yet Nikki does it and I'm not mad at him for doing it. It's just like that's one of the best things about this show is creating these flawed characters who you can understand even if they do things that are a little bit irascible here and there. I was really glad not to hear all the funeral speeches. I yeah. I was worried when I saw that there was going to be a funeral coming up that we were going to hear all these speeches and kind of relive everything that we just went through with the train and that it was going to kind of take away a bit from the train because, you know, this episode is supposed to be moving forward, you know, putting that in the past, grieving, feeling what they're going to feel and then move forward. So I was actually really glad not to see those speeches. I think my favorite part of this episode, <laughs> looking back, has to sort of be the kind of continuation of that very ending of the train where you have Jack and Rebecca having this conversation and she's talking about being scared. And then he just says, don't worry, you know, you'll still be there. You'll still be with that. That, that is the moment that came the closest to breaking me in this episode. I will say that. It was so well put together to sort of give hope to everyone out there who's lost people that you get that feeling that maybe in the afterlife, they are, your, your loved ones are still there and they're still around and they're still keeping an eye on you and, and that feeling or, you know, people who are maybe scared of death themselves or passing that maybe this is what is waiting for you, that you still get to be around, not for any of the creepy <laughs> stuff like yeah. Rebecca said, but for like just all those little moments that you don't want to miss. It's nice to also have closure on one of the great This Is Us <laughs> mysteries, the pin the tail on the donkey, which finally comes back into yeah. focus. The one thing that I was really happy that this episode touched on was a part of the conversation that Kate was having with her brothers sitting on that porch. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I think so many people are going to relate to, which is once both your parents have passed away, the worry that you're going to drift apart. And because 
they are all spread out across the country that is even more of a worry i remember you know when my grandfather passed everyone you know was there for my grandma every day and her five children all live somewhat close within a 40 minute drive and you know some of them down the street still kind of thing from their old house but when my grandma passed that was sort of the moment that they were all very kind of worried about that too because they were the people that made sure that everyone was together for all the christmases thanksgivings easters birthdays all that sort of stuff well birthdays were like birthday month because they had like 22 <laughs> grandchildren and great grandchildren so i was like ah oh, we're all february cool let's have 15 birthdays but they were really worried that that was going to happen too when they uh, passed away. And it did. Uh, I mean, the family is still close, but everyone's sort of in their smaller pockets of families. So I really appreciated that conversation. Mm -hmm. But I wish that we had had a chance to actually see them in the future being true to that word where they're like, nah, not us. We're not going to drift. And then just something to be like, hey, they're all together on Thanksgiving. That would have broke me. <laughs> And then Pilgrim Rick oh, that comes back into me. play once again, and then something bad happens again, and Kevin gets super possessive of the hat. Yeah. Uh, it, okay, the, the flash forward conversation, like, this is really important to have now, because, yeah, it would have been critical to just sort of ease our concerns that Kate was having in this episode. But it's also, it would have been ambitious to give them thus give those to us, but at the same time, not that ambitious. It's something they could have easily done. Like we met a grown up version of Haley and yet they yeah. never gave us anything more of that version of Haley. We saw like a tiny glimpse of adult Jack Damon in this episode, but they could have given us more of him as well. Like I think one of the most important sort of themes of this show is resonance and trying to really pay forward what you have been told by the generations before you and i think what better way to show the impact of jack rebecca miguel all of these people is to sort of show the next generation of pearsons that they are carrying on a lot of these traditions in their own ways we could have met even an older version of you know kevin and madison's kids we could have seen some of that play out we could have seen deja and malik with their now we know it as a boy like there's so much that they could have given us there absolutely i just think that it, it could have made a bigger impact if we had them all together for Thanksgiving, you know, the big three, all their, you know, children, so all the grandchildren, having one of them wear, you know, the <laughs> Pilgrim Rick hat, like it just, I think it would have made a bigger impact to give us just something of their future to show us that they made it past that drift that does happen. Maybe they're saving it for the spinoff. Okay, I know there's probably not going to be a spinoff, but you know, I just... I feel good that there actually might be. I know that Dan has said a million times he's not doing it, not doing it, yeah. not doing it, but... I just, I really feel like if the right offer is driven up to his house, he'll be, and he has the right idea for it and feels confident about, then he will do it. I just, I, I think things just have to align. All right, now I will mention here the part of this episode that should have been ridiculously corny, but I still kind of liked it was the big three doing the big three like hand signal chant oh, thing. I loved it. I did too. And I was just thinking in my head, I was like, okay, this could have been really hokey, but for some reason I'm like on board with it. They did such a nice job with that. That, that. That scene with them sitting there really was the scene. Like it was everything in this episode for me. Yeah, and it was really, really well done. And that's why it's weird to be here being like, oh, I wish they had done this, that, or the other thing. I think this finale is really safe because it's like the finale they gave us, it was really good. And it is impressive that they thought years ahead and they decided, okay, you know, we're going to make sure we capture these kids at a certain age and all of that sort of stuff. Like, I, I appreciate that from like a production standpoint so much it's just like i can't help but sit here and feel like you guys could have just done a little bit more yeah that's the thing when i look back at this final season some of the episodes that are really gonna sit with me are like the miguel episode yes. 
And the train episode, that train episode was very ambitious. It was so well put together. It had like a punch impact. Yeah. Like it felt like my stepmother said that was the ending. It was so, it was done so well and it had such a perfect punch to it that it's like, am I going to later be talking about this finale for years to come? Probably not as much as some of these other episodes like The Train, like that really impacted me. Yeah, I think if we were, you know, not that we have like a top five or ten episode <laughs> list in our head or whatever, but it's no. just sort of like, I feel like this, maybe it would crack the top ten for me. I don't know if it would crack the top five for me just because we had The Train, we had Miguel, we had, you know, we referenced Memphis, the Memphis this. episode from so long ago. It's just like, I feel like there are episodes that overall had a greater impact. But this was a worthy send-off to sort of the themes of the show, mm -hmm. the Pearson family. I think it gives a very good amount of closure that, you know, we can all come out of this <laughs> and not feel, like, just devastated or sad or that something bad is about to happen to our favorites. No, I feel like they're going to go off and live very good lives and make good choices. President Randall. Vote for Randall Pearson. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys. At least you're not voting for Connor Roy anymore. All right. You know, Connor, you lost me when you didn't take off the jacket. Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> nice to have a great succession deep pull yeah. 21 minutes into a video. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you so, so much. much, everybody. Yeah. I mean, we have, like we said earlier, so many other shows we are covering, including Succession, by the way, even mm -hmm. though we don't know when it will be back. But Same with Handmaid's Tale. That is, we've seen that a lot of you guys are watching that as well. We don't know when it's coming back, but we've been covering it here for a while, and we will be covering that again. You know, there's a lot of good stuff coming up this year for us. House of the Dragon, American Horror yeah. Story, The Boys, Animal Kingdom, Better Call Saul, Succession, <laughs> Yellow Jackets. There is tons of stuff that's happening here. Plus, again, we are going to be going through a lot of the suggestions that you guys gave us yes. and see if any of that works for us, too. Also, check out those playlists because there might be something that we didn't mention <laughs> here that you guys are also watching or pick up a new show with yeah, us. Yeah, we, we want to see you guys stick around. Yeah, we want to continue the conversations. And thank you to everyone who gave us a chance <laughs> and, and spent some time with us. I'm sad now. <laughs> oh, I know. My heart is breaking, guys. Oh, I know. I, I really hope to see you guys stick around with us. We're going to go eat our feelings, but uh, thank you guys. Check out our Instagram at TV. We'll see you here next time.